and now comes the final thing. The soul beholds God, but the aim of the mystic is to be one with its beloved. I and the Father are one. I was challenged yesterday as to whether in the Gospels uh, uh, there is such a text. I looked it up, John 10.30, uh, I and the Father are one. Um, this realization. Well, Halaj, the great uh, Sufi mystic, describes the situation this way. Well, I'll begin with Ramakrishna, who says, when you behold God, you are not God. Uh, there is a, a pane of glass between, and the soul beholds this object, but the goal is to be one with that. How can we break through? How can we remove that barrier? And then, bang, soul and God, beyond pairs of opposites. Ram um, is, Halaj says the situation is like that of a moth seeing at night a, a lantern. And it wants to get to the flame, but the glass keeps it out. And it batters itself all night long, and then goes to its friends in the morning and tells them what a wonderful thing it has just seen. And they say, you don't look the better for it. And this is the condition of the yogi, the uh, ascetic, knocking himself to pieces to get through. Then it goes back the next night, and by luck or device, does a breakthrough, and for an instant has achieved its goal. It is the flame. And that instant is an eternal instant beyond time and space. And that is the goal here. So we remove the barrier, and bang, Sahasrara, the serpent, becomes one with the lotus at the crown of the head, the thousand-petaled lotus. Sahasrara means thousand-petaled. Here it is. But in the center, all we see are two footprints. These are the footprints of Vishnu that are to be worshipped. Why do we have footprints here? We thought we had broken through. Well, we're still talking, that's why. Uh, the symbols. And the words can act as barriers. We can get stuck with the footprints. Um, or we can pass through. And there's a text that appears both in, the, um, in Lao Tzu's uh, work and in the Upanishads in the Tao Te Ching, and in, uh, I think, the Kenu Upanishad, that um, those who know do not speak, and those who sp speak do not know. That's a hard word for one giving a lecture, but they, <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a warning here that we've got to go past the footprints. Chakras 4, 5, 6, and 7. Ninth century, a stone cross in Northern Ireland. 14th century BC in Egypt, one, two, three. Those who have not got above three are still animals. And so at the weighing of the heart against the feather, if the heart is not lighter than the feather or as light as the feather, which represents spirit, angels, all that floating up there, it is going to mean that the body is soul are to be consumed by this monster. His nose is right there between chapters 3 and 4. <coughs> However, if the spiritual has won, then it is Tot, who is the counterpart of Hermes, here represented as the baboon that greets the morning sun with howling, and uh, he is in charge of the other chakras. 4, 5, 6, 7. 1400 BC. And so now we come to the final problem. What is this thing here between chakra three, uh, six and chakra seven? At six, pairs of opposites. From Brahma down to the blade of grass, all is pair of opposites. Above that, neither you nor God. This is what's called Maya. Maya is, as it were, the womb. And it's from a root Ma, that means to measure forth. So she is the one that creates all pairs of opposites, creates both the lingam and the yoni. But beyond that, there is nothing of the kind. And so. Here's the whole universe as the goddess. We are here, the hell's down there, the heaven's up here. How do you go to hell? By making your ego system harder and harder and harder and being stuck with it. Hell is the place of people stuck with themselves, stuck on themselves. And uh, how do you get to heaven? Open, open, open until finally all is transpersonal. 